Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 14 has some great features and I did a separate video about that covering all of the major features, but there's some hidden ones you may not know that have been discovered. And so here are 10 of them. And the first one is when you copy from someplace and then you paste, it will now let you know where it's being pasted from. This is a security measure to let you know that this app has access to your clipboard, but it also is a reference point to let you know where something is being pasted from. So it's super convenient and it will let you know every time. The next feature is battery optimization for AirPods. Now this is something that's built in that you don't really see, but it will turn on optimized battery charging with the AirPods so that they're charging up to about 80%. And then if you grab them in the morning, they're charged up to 100%. This will extend its battery life over time. So that's built into iOS 14. Now the next feature you may have heard of because it's gotten a lot of press, but it's called back tap. And what it does is it allows you to set an action based on you tapping the back of your phone two or three times. So for example, I've set that up for the flashlight as an example, you'll see what it does is if I tap it twice, it turns on the flashlight. If I tap it three times, it will turn off the flashlight. Now this can be assigned to many different things by going into settings. Then you want to go to accessibility. Then you want to go to touch and then scroll down until you get to back tap, tap on back tap, and then you can set it for whatever you'd like. Now I created a shortcut called flashlight, but these are all of the default options. So you can have it take a screenshot, go to notification center, turn your volume up or down, and then you've got accessibility options as well. And then scroll gestures and also shortcuts. So you can set it to any one of your shortcuts that you might have. So if you create a shortcut, you can assign it and then you'll have that option. You can change it to whatever you'd like. So it's super customizable. Now a feature that's been on newer iPhones, but not on older iPhones for a while is the ability to change your frame rate within the camera. So you can change resolution and frame rate. So if we go to video, you'll see in the upper left, we have 4k 30. If I want to change that, I can just tap on it. And while this is not incredible, it is something new that wasn't there before with older phones. So you can just go into your camera settings down here. We'll go into camera in camera. We can select our frame rate option here and then cycle through them. So maybe you want 4k 60 we go back and now we can cycle through 4k 24 30 and 60 frames per second so it's super nice that they finally brought it to older devices so i'm glad to see they've done that now ios 14 allows you to bring widgets to your home screen and many of you have seen this already but there's something called a smart stack that can rotate on its own throughout the day based on what you're doing most during those times but you can create your own so i've modified my home screen to show you how to do this so if we go back to our widgets here We'll go into jiggle mode so that we can add a new one. Maybe we'll add weather. So we'll tap on weather and I want a smaller one this time. We'll bring this over here, but maybe I want a smart stack of my own. Let me add another. Maybe I want podcasts. So let me select this one and we've got podcasts. And then what I can do is drag it on top of the other one and create my own smart stack. Now it will change throughout the day. If we press and hold on it, we can edit the stack and you'll see we have smart rotate. So we can edit this with whatever we'd like and it rotates throughout the day. So it's super nice and useful. I've been using it for a couple days like this and I find it very helpful. So it's something that I really appreciate. And as more developers add widgets, when we get closer to the iOS 14 release date in the fall, it'll be really great to see what we can do with this. Now there's a new feature in messages that I haven't seen many people mention. So if we go into messages, you can create pins and things like that. But if you notice at the upper left, there's something called filters. If we tap on filters, you'll see that it's automatically filtered our messages and SMS as well into all messages, known senders and unknown senders. So if you just want to go to all messages, you'll have your normal screen. Known senders are people in your contacts list and unknown senders are people that you don't know, or maybe passcodes that have been sent to you from numbers you're not familiar with. So it's nice to see them auto sorting all of our messages. There's a new accessibility option in iOS 14 that I think could be helpful to everyone in general, but it's designed for those who are hearing impaired. So if we go to settings and then we scroll down to where it says accessibility, scroll down a little bit further down to hearing, you'll see that it says sound recognition. 
If we go into sound recognition, you'll see that we can turn that on and then select a sound. And so the iPhone will listen to any one of these sounds that you have turned on and notify you when it hears those. So for example, you'll see, I have it turned to doorbell. And if I play a doorbell, it should actually pick up and let us know. Now I tried it with this phone. It didn't really show me anything but it should recognize that and then notify you when it hears a doorbell, it might recognize that it's coming from a phone nearby, but I'll show you what it looks like as I took a snapshot of it. And it says doorbell, a sound has been recognized that may be a doorbell. So anytime it recognizes that it thinks it heard a doorbell or any one of the other settings that you have turned on, it will let you know. Now we're deep in menus of iOS in the settings. And so if you want to see where you're at, or just want to go back quickly, you can press and hold back now and you'll see it says sound recognition, accessibility and settings in that order. If we tap on settings, it brings us right back to the main settings page. So that's another new helpful feature. Now within iOS 14, there's a new app library where it automatically organizes the apps that you don't want on your home screens. And you'll see that it has recently added and productivity and everything else that you don't see on my home screens. Now, maybe you have an app on a page like this one, the new translate app, but you don't want it here, but you want it in the app list, press and hold. And instead of removing the app tap on remove, it says delete translate. You can either delete it or add to library. I'll add it to the library. The page disappears and now it's in the library. So it's super useful. It's a way to organize things quickly, get rid of apps that you don't want on your home screen or anywhere else, but put them in an organized fashion somewhere else. Now within iOS 14, there's some new options for shortcuts that are really helpful if you're charging or on low power mode and they're automatic. So if you go to automation in shortcuts and create a personal automation, and then scroll down, you'll see we have some new options for low power mode, battery level or charger. We'll select charger. And then when the charger is connected or disconnected, you can create ones for each tap on next, add an action. Maybe we'll have it turn on. Do not disturb. You'll see set. Do not disturb. We'll have it turned on when it's plugged in and maybe we'll turn it off later, but we'll just hit next hit done and let's try it out. So now we've got a personal automation. We'll turn off. Do not disturb. We'll plug in the phone. And as soon as it's plugged in, it turns on do not disturb. So it's a super convenient way to automate whatever you'd like. You can have it adjust the brightness when you're in low power mode, anything you'd like. So that's built in and there's some more automations that I think will be really helpful. So if you want to put it in airplane mode when you're charging, maybe to speed some of that up a little bit, you'll be able to do that. Now, Apple has added a new option when it comes to taking selfies. So for those of you that take selfies, you'll know that iPhones don't mirror the front camera. So we'll just take a quick selfie and I'll hold up an iPhone for reference. And then we'll go into settings and you'll see that there's a new setting in the camera here that says mirror front camera. So if we turn that on and then we go back to the camera and then we hold up the iPhone again, and then we go to our photos. You'll see here's a selfie. I'll go back and you'll see they're flipped. So if you want to mirror the front selfie camera, you can when you take a selfie. So they've added that option. Now, the final feature I wanted to share with you that behaves a little bit differently with iOS 14 is capturing outside the frame in the camera. In previous versions of iOS, even if you were zoomed in, it would capture outside and make it difficult for composition and framing. So if you go into settings and then you go down to camera, under camera, you'll see it says view outside the frame. Now we had options to turn this off, but it didn't really work the same way with previous versions of iOS. So for example, if I go to the camera and then maybe I put the 10 R in the frame here, zoom in, you'll see it doesn't go past what we're looking at. So it stays within within here. We're not capturing anything outside and it makes it easier to compose our shot. If I switch over to an iPhone running iOS 13.5.1, you'll see I'm zoomed in and it's showing past where it's actually going to capture. So if I zoom out, zoom back in, it will still capture that way. Even when the, the feature is 
turned off. So you'll see it says photos capture outside the frame, videos capture outside the frame. When these are turned off under composition, it still doesn't turn off that sort of annoying outside the frame. It's a nice effect, but it makes it difficult to put everything where you want it. So I'm glad to see that they've actually changed this with iOS 14. So no longer do we have to try and compose our shot while zoomed in. Now, if you like that feature, turn it back on. We'll go back to camera here, zoom in, and now it's outside the frame. So if you want to keep it on, you can, but you now can turn it off and it makes it much easier to frame your video or photos. So those are 10 hidden features within iOS 14 that you may not know. If you found any others that you think will be helpful to other viewers, please place them in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.